Hey, how's it going? Assalamualaikum. In this video, we are still going to be talking about correlation and association, but we are focusing on Pearson, Spearman, and Kendall's. So what is a correlation association? As I mentioned in my previous video, it is to understand association and measure the strength and direction between two quantitative variables. So please remember that correlation or association does not indicate cause and effect. So if you want to indicate cause and effect, if you want to identify um, whether a factor causes something, you need to conduct an experimental design. All right. So, correlation also indicates the extent to which two variables move together, whether they move together in parallel or whether they have an inverse relationship. So, if you have a positive correlation, it tells us that the variable actually moves together in the same direction, while a negative correlation uh, occurs when one variable increases with the other one decreases. All right, so that is what we call as an inverse relationship. So correlation has a value of between um, negative one and one. The symbol that is typically used for correlation is actually rho for population and r for sample. All right, so this is the threshold for interpreting effect size for um, correlation. Okay. Um, for a correlation, the effect size um, 0.1 is considered to be small and medium is point, at least 0 0.30 with a large effect size of 0 0.50 and a very large effect size at point more than 7. This is according to Cohen. Alright, so let's delve into our Pearson correlation. Um, it's, it's fairly very easy, very simple, so don't worry about it. Pearson product moment correlation. So this is a parametric analysis, therefore it has its own assumptions, right? So it provides indication of linear relationship between variables. You can have more than one variables, you can have a pair of variables or more than a pair of variables, you can have four, you can have five, right? The possibilities are endless. So assumptions that needs to be upheld for Pearson product moment correlation is that your data needs to be continuous, all right? There should be a linear relationship between the variables. It should not contain any significant outliers. And again, remember, normal distribution. So the statistics of interest is the correlation coefficient, or also known as R, the F value and the degrees of freedom, as well as the probability type 1 error, or our famous P value. So let's take a look at an example over here. A bank loan officer wanted to inspect whether there's a relationship between income and value of the car his prospective customer purchased. So he selected 20 customer randomly and noted their income and the price of the car that they purchased. So let's take a look at the data over here. You can pause this video right now and you can input the date so that you are ready to go when I show you uh, the example. So let's take a look at the objective. Objective is simple to test the association between income and car price if there's any association. And the hypothesis would be there's no relationship between income and car price and your alternative can be there is a significant relationship between income and car price. So pause this video here and input the data. All right. So I already have the data with me over here uh, in my SPSS. Um, there you go. You can see um, everything is inputted. All right. So let's just run the analysis. Over here, you go to analyze, you go to correlate, and this is a bivariate, sorry, correlate, bivariate correlation. So you just put in all of your variables. Okay, so you can see in this table over here, um, for this example, we are looking into Pearson, right? Um, assuming that all of the assumptions are upheld. So please remember, for every single parametric analysis that you want to run, you have to ensure that all of the assumptions are met. All right. So in this example over here, I, I just keep the assumptions testing, but you need to do that um, before um, jumping into a parametric analysis. So please, please, please remember that. All right. So if you want to um, 
if you want to run four candles, it's still it's still gonna be the same menu. Analyze, go to correlate, and then go choose by variate, and then you're gonna have your candle style beam over here, as well as the spearman's rank over here. But now let's focus on Pearson. So the test of significance also uh, also gives you an option whether you want to test for two tail or one tail. So remember earlier on my hypothesis, I did not specify any direction. So I'm testing for the two tail significance. Okay, let's go to options. Um, I don't need anything over there. I don't any need anything in style, and I don't need bootstrap. Just click on OK. All right. So as you can see over here, you can see like. Okay, it is actually 0.931. Wow, that's really, really high. That's a very large effect, right? As according to Cohen. So income has a significant relationship with car price. So as you can see over here, um, the asterisk given, correlation is significant at the um, 0 0.01 level. Okay, for the two-tailed test. So let's go back to our slides over here. As you can see, that's a data entry. Remember, test for normality first. Don't forget about that. Okay, let's take a look at the output. The objective was to test if there's an association between variable X and Y or your income and car price. The R value is actually 0.932. According to Cohen, correlation coefficient value of more than 0.7 indicates a very large correlation. If it's like too large, you would often wonder whether it is actually the same variable. All right? So thus, there is an association between the two variables. The p-value of the test is less than 0 0.001. Therefore, we fail to accept the null hypothesis, right? So this is how you report it. A Pearson correlation test was conducted to assess the relationship between income and car price. There was a significant correlation between income and car price expectations with an R-value of 0.932 at the p-value of less than 0 0.001. Or you can also write less than 0 0.05. A scatter plot summarizes the results. Oh, scatter plot. So we need to conduct a scatter plot. Right. So what is a scatter plot? Remember in your descriptive statistics, you have already run a scatter plot. So let's just recap. So it is an initial tool to visually observe the relationship between two quantitative variables. It indicates strength and direction. Okay. So a widely scattered point indicates low correlation, while a less scattered point, where if the points are um, close to one another, that indicates a very high correlation, right? So as you can see on the slides over here, so this indicates a positive linear correlation. It goes upwards. If it goes downward, it indicates a negative linear association. You can see that this in a shape of a U is actually a non-linear association. It is not straight. There's no straight line, right? And this indicates that there is no associations. So scatter plot example. Let's run. Let's let's try to um, come up with the scatter plot. Okay. Go to graph. Okay, I have a simple scatter over here. And then my income would be the x-axis and the car price is my y-axis because the y is always your dependent variable, right? So I don't need titles. Um, I don't need that. Um, just click on OK. And then it's going to give you the scatter plot. There you go. It indicates a positive linear association between the two variables. From the scatter plot, this is another option. So you can get the scatter plot both ways. It is um, on your slides, in your notes. Um, I use the graph scatter method. You can also use the graph regression variable method any way you please. Right? So from the scatter plot, it can be seen that generally the higher the income, the higher the value of the car customer purchased. Okay, visibly there are no major outliers. I cannot see any major outliers. Therefore, there is a positive relationship between income and car price. So you may want to pause the video here and try this exercise out. Okay, so assume that a researcher wanted, there's double wanted there, really wanted, wanted to test the relationship between performance expectancy, social influence, and customer satisfaction. Wow, this sounds familiar to your research, right? 
133 data were collected from adults who have used at least one food delivery app, delivery app in the past six months. Okay, so they used uh, use the food delivery file given and run a correlation analysis to identify the association between PE, performance expectancy, social influence and customer satisfaction. What are the research objectives? Write down the null and alternative hypothesis. Write up the results according to the APA format. The file name food delivery mock data can be found in our week 10 folder. Have fun! So are you done with your exercise? Uh, that wasn't so bad, isn't it? Here's a hint. Um, remember descriptive statistics. You need to do something with the variable. They are in the form of measurements, right? So you need to do something with the variable so that you can get an average scores of all of those measurement items, right? So that's a hint. And I'm going to upload the solution for the exercise in, um, in a separate video. All right, so let's talk about the Spearman's rank and the candle style. So just now we have used uh, the Pearson product moment correlation analysis. Um, if your data is not normal, um, unfortunately, a lot of data out there are typically uh, not normal. You can use a Spearman's rank, also a uh, candle style. All right. So the Spearman's row and candle style beta is a non-parametric analysis. It Again, it provides indication of relationship between variables. Both variables must be ordinal or numeric or non-normally distributed. Okay, for Spearman's rank, usually it is um, it provides a larger values than candle style, and calculation is typically based on deviations, and they are more sensitive to errors and discrepancies in the data, and this is more widely used. Yes, typically, typically for non-parametric analysis, we often resort to Spearman. Okay, as for candles, it has a smaller value than Spearman. Calculation is based on concordant and discordant pairs they are insensitive to errors and the p-value is more accurate with a smaller sample so what is concordant and discordant okay so for concordant both members of one observations are larger than their respective member of other observations as for discordant if two numbers in one observations differ in the opposite direction so the steps are basically the same with your Pearson. It's just that instead of Pearson, you would want to click candle style beta and Spearman's row. All right. So let's do just that. Okay. Go to analyze. Go to correlate. Again, by variate, we want want to click on candles um, and Spearman and leave out Pearson because we have already done that. Uh, remember, this is for non-normal data or if you have um, ordinal data or a ranked data. Okay, there you go. We have the results over here. Remember that Spearman is typically larger than candles. Um, as you can see over here, 0.886 uh, for the Spearman's row, as well for the candle style, is actually 0.782. All right, and both is actually significant, indicating that there is actually a relationship between income and car price. Right, objective again is the same to test if there's an association. Um, the R value is 0.886, uh, so definitely this is from uh, Spearman, right? According to Cohen, correlation coefficient value of um, more than 0.7 indicates a very large correlation, thus there is an association between the two variables. The p-value of the test is actually less than 0.001. How do I know? Correlation is significant at the rate of 0.001. So we fail to accept the null hypothesis reporting a candle style it depends where which whichever um, analysis that you choose okay um, a candle style or Spearman's row test was conducted to assess the relationship between income and car price there was a significant correlation between income and car price expectations where the R um, or the correlation coefficient equals to 0 0.886 uh, with AP value of point less than 0 0.001 so where do I get this 0.782? This is from 
from candle style. So you can report if you use spearmint, definitely you would want to report spearmint. If you use candle style, you would want to report candle style. A scatter plot summarizes the results as per figure one. Okay, this is an example assuming that the data is not normal. And we are done with correlation and association. I shall see you in our next video answering the exercise for correlation.